Hello and welcome back to another Shadowlands gold making video. So today we will talk about Shadowlands investments and items you could potentially flip for great profit in the Shadowlands. Investing my gold into items and selling those items for a higher price has always been a really fun and interesting way to make gold in my opinion. I love the risk and I love playing the market. This is something I've done a lot in Classic WoW and I've more than quintupled my initial worth in Classic by investing in flipping and I'm hoping to carry some of that over into Shadowlands as well. However, the amount of items you can invest into for Shadowlands is fairly limited, and buying insane amounts of quantities will make it a lot more difficult to sell, but even so, I have put together a list of items that I think are worth investing in, and many of these are items you should buy as soon as possible, as they will creep up in price the closer we get to the actual launch of Shadowlands and some of the items could increase the second the pre-patch drops as well, for one of two reasons. Number one is a relic of the past update, which will increase the demand for tons of materials, and number two is a removal of the Brutosaur mount, which means less people will be panic selling their inventory. At the end of the video, I'll also talk a bit about certain investments that I've heard other content creators talk about, and I'll give my opinion on why they are not worth investing in. So with that being said, let's talk about some investments. Darkmoon Firewater. Buy this now and sell in the Shadowlands. This is an easy item to monopolize, usually has a fairly limited supply or quantity available, and people will most likely use it for fast gathering of materials when farming. This is especially appealing early in new expansions when herbalism and mining farms are at peak value. Next up is any relic of the past materials. Buy them now, sell them in the pre-patch, or in Shadowlands. Alternatively, use them for vendor shuffles. Materials here include rune cloth, wind wool cloth, linen cloth, savage leather, not hide leather, borean leather, and a lot more. Blizzard could decide to build upon the relic system later in Shadowlands, or in the next expansion as well, which would keep the value of these materials high, and maybe even cause another increase in price. The Sky Golem, buy this now and sell it in the Shadowlands. This mount is usually always at peak value, early in new expansions due to the ability to stay on your mount while gathering herbs, and herbalism is always lucrative early in new expansions. Another point here is that many people are panic selling mounts like this at fairly low values right now as a last rush to get their Brutus or mount. Netherweave Bags Buy the materials you need to craft this, and consider selling them in pre-patch, or in Shadowlands. A lot of people will use netherweave cloth for relics of the past vendor shuffles, and the price of banks might therefore increase. Another point here is that the leveling speed is vastly reduced, people will level new characters, new players might start, long story short, people need banks. Also, any battle pets from old raids like for example Ice Crown Citadel and Firelands. So, if you play the pre-patch or Shadowlands beta, or simply watched a video on either one, you will have picked up on the fact that raw gold farms are kinda dead, or at least worth a lot less now than they used to be. This is because of the level squish and the item level squish of the items, both of which affect the vendor value of certain items. Firelands is a raid that has been fairly popular to do, for people on their main and alts for some raw gold, and that will no longer really be an option in Shadowlands, because the raw gold value of those old expansion raids will be a fraction of what it used to be. This means less people will be doing these raids, which also means less people will be supplying the battle pets from those raids on the auction house. The value of these pets is pretty much bound to go up, the only question is by how much. Another wow factor that could happen is like the Mechagon patch, we had a battle pet quest on Mechagon and Nostratar, where there was one super overpowered pet that could win those fights by itself. And this could happen again in Shadowlands, and maybe one of these old expansions raids battle pets will be that super overpowered pet. In that case, it will skyrocket. That being said, there will still most likely be some constant supply of these battle pets in Shadowlands as well, because people are still farming old raids for mounts and transmog items. But less people will be running old raids in Shadowlands than in BFA, so I believe they should see an increase in value. The Goblin Glider Kit. This is a no-brainer, and it usually goes up in price the last couple of days, 
before a new expansion comes out, and usually stays at semi-high value for a couple of weeks as it's really useful to navigate through difficult maps, and you can quickly travel from a high place like a mountain, and just glide down from it at high speed. You have several places like this in the Shadowlands, and having a stack or two of goblin gliders should be really helpful to most players. Now let's talk about some other items that other people have mentioned as possible good investment, but I believe they are the exact opposite. The BFA zone exclusive sellable mounts, like for example the terrified pack mule from Dustwar, or the dune scavenger from Voldoon. Yes, less people will be farming them on a regular basis in Shadowlands, since they will be old expansion content by then, and you won't make as much gold from the cloth you get from the farm, but still, multiboxers can easily farm these, and with the higher levels in Shadowlands, you will be one-shotting the mobs over here, so you can potentially farm them even faster than you can right now. On top of that, current multiboxers that have been farming these have hundreds of these mounts in their guild bank. Speaking as a person that knows several multiboxers, I can say I know one multiboxer playing on three servers, and he has 200 dune scavengers on each server. Most of which he has farmed himself, but some of them he has been buying simply to keep control of the market and manipulate the prices. Now that's only dune scavengers, and I would think he has quite a few of the other zone specific mounts as well, so basically the supply of these mounts will always be there. And for multiboxers, these mounts were simply a bonus to an already great gold farm, meaning gold farming multiboxers spent a ton of hours farming here and obtained a ton of mounts while doing so. And if they ever run out of supply, which I don't think will happen, they can easily go back and farm it again if the price is good enough. But I mean, all of this is pure speculation anyway, and who knows, right? Another sub-point as to why I don't think these mounts will sell too well is that they are pretty much recolors of already existing mounts, so most of the people interested in them will be collectors, and you gotta imagine that most collectors have them by now, and I doubt Shadowlands will bring thousands of new collectors to the game. So yeah, there it is guys, some things to buy and some things not to buy for the Shadowlands. Investing in items is such a fun little mini-game within the game itself, and it's always so exciting to see whether or not you end up making profit, and hopefully this video helps you make some profit. If you did enjoy the video, make sure you give it a like, and subscribe to the channel for more World of Warcraft content. I do also have a Discord server which you can join through the description down below. But yeah, that is it, thank you so much for watching this video, and I will see you in the next one.